In 2022, something shocking happened in the UK. In just six weeks, they made a combat drone that could fire missiles, and that was only the beginning. Now, the battlefield is changing fast. There are hypersonic engines flying at Mach 9 speed, drones guided by PlayStation controllers, and robot dogs that move like real ones, sniffing out danger. It sounds like a sci-fi movie, but it's real. These aren't just weapons, they're machines that decide who lives or dies in a fight. Soldiers and robots now work together in war. But here's the big question. Which of these inventions will change how wars are fought forever? Could one of them end wars faster? Or maybe make them scarier than ever before? Stay with me, because the last invention on this list will show a shocking secret. A secret that proves we're closer than ever to science fiction style, unstoppable war. In 2022, a small British team did something huge. They built a drone that could take off like a helicopter, fly like a jet, and shoot missiles, all in just six weeks. It was called the Jackal, made by a company named Flyby Technology. This wasn't just a test toy. The Jackal flew high and fast. Then it locked onto targets and fired real Thales missiles. It hit targets eight kilometers away. That's like hitting something in a whole other city. The world took notice. A drone had now become a helicopter, a tank, and a soldier, all in one. It could land anywhere. It didn't need a runway. It didn't need a pilot on board. It was like a robot warrior, flying into danger, with no fear. And it worked in real tests, not just in labs or games. The British team didn't just imagine the future. They built it, and that was just one drone. Now imagine if other countries, with more money, bigger armies, and faster tech, started making drones like this too. Drones that don't just fly, but think, aim, and strike all by themselves. This moment in 2022 was more than just a milestone. It was the spark, a spark that could change how wars are fought forever. But what happens when drones don't just help soldiers? What if they become the soldiers? Right after Britain's drone shock, two more surprises came. This time, from Sweden and Ukraine. Sweden showed off a deadly weapon called the Robot 17. It's a laser-guided missile. It flies at 450 meters per second. That's faster than a speeding jet. Its warhead is nine kilograms of destruction. It can melt through armor and destroy vehicles with a single hit. But the twist, Ukraine didn't fight with high-tech missiles. They used a $27 net gun. Yes, just $27. They called it the Pashka. A soldier could aim it at a drone, shoot the net in the air, and trap it like a flying bug. It looked simple, but it worked. One soldier, one cheap tool, one drone down, a millionaire missile, and a DIY net gun. Both are dangerous, both are effective, both are part of a new war. This was no longer a battle of the richest countries. It became a fight of the smartest tactics. Wars used to need tanks, jets, and billions. Now a backpack and a net could change the outcome. Sweden brought speed. Ukraine brought smarts. Together they proved one truth. Modern war is no longer about size, it's about surprise. And the world was watching. Because this wasn't the end of drone tech, it was just the start. What happens when drones don't just kill, but they also carry gear, spy from above, and deliver supplies. The year was 2022, and Britain launched a new kind of drone. It wasn't fast, it wasn't deadly, but it was a lifesaver. They called it the Talon DT-300. It could carry up to 45 kilograms. That's heavier than a child. It flew at 120 kilometers per hour, and it could travel as far as 140 kilometers without stopping. That's like flying from one battlefield to another, without anyone getting hurt. It became the supply hero, carrying ammo, water, medicine, and even food to soldiers in need. Before, soldiers had to run through open fire just to carry boxes. Now, they looked up, and the flying mule was already on its way. Some even gave it nicknames. It was their silent teammate, their sky helper, their robotic buddy, it didn't shoot missiles, it didn't spy, but it saved lives every single day. One soldier said, 
This drone kept my friend alive. That makes it more powerful than any weapon. The Talon wasn't the only one. Other drones soon followed, built to haul, rescue, or deliver gear in seconds. Warfare was changing again, not just with bullets and blasts, but with robots doing the heavy work. No lunch breaks, no sleep, just endless service. And if one broke down, another would take its place. Like ants in the sky, these drones became unstoppable. But this raised a big question. If drones could carry supplies on land, could something fly above and watch the skies without ever leaving? In the skies over the battlefield, a balloon floated silently. Not a toy, not a weather balloon. This was the Aerobona aerostat, the eye that never blinked. It could be set up in just 15 minutes. Once in the air, it stayed up for 20 days, day and night, rain or shine, watching, always watching. It floated high above, quietly staring at a 10-kilometer circle below. Every movement, every shadow, every vehicle, soldier, or drone, nothing escaped its view. For enemies, there was no hiding, no trees, no walls, no fog could protect them now. This was 24-7 surveillance, like a satellite that never slept, only lower and scarier. But it didn't stop there. On the ground, Ukraine rolled out the Protector UGV, a robot scout car. It crawled across rough dirt, into forests, past ruins. It sent live video back to command, real-time updates, clear, sharp feeds. From the sky to the soil, war was turning into a live video game. Commanders could now see the whole battlefield, every corner, every cave, every second. It felt unreal, but it was already real. A mix of floating balloons and ground robots had turned war into a never-ending live stream. And soldiers? They were still there, still fighting, still bleeding, still human. But now came a new question. If robots could watch the skies and scout the land, then who would protect soldiers in face-to-face -face battles? Because when danger is just meters away, only the fastest tech can save lives. In the middle of gunfire, soldiers used to feel naked. Bullets flew, bombs exploded. The cover was thin. But then came the Gwerza O2, a strong, fast, armored vehicle, a mobile fortress on wheels. It could carry 10 troops and rush across war zones at 100 kilometers per hour. Inside, soldiers sat safe behind thick steel and shockproof walls. Outside, they had bulletproof blankets, strong enough to stop machine guns. They had foldable armor shields, even armored umbrellas that opened like walls. Yes, umbrellas, but not for rain, for survival. This wasn't just about attacking, it was about living. In battles where death seemed certain, this gear gave soldiers a second chance. But high above, there was more. The old rapier missile system, once forgotten, was upgraded and reborn. It could still hit jets moving at Mach 3, that's three times the speed of sound. Fast, deadly, reliable. Even after decades, it stayed a guardian in the sky. So from the ground to the clouds, new shields and old weapons came together. Soldiers no longer had to hide and hope. They could now stand and survive. It changed how soldiers moved, how they fought, and most of all, how they stayed alive. But now, a bigger question loomed. What if soldiers weren't even needed anymore? What if machines did the fighting, alone, because of the next chapter of war? It might be the end of humans on the battlefield. If these machines already feel like science fiction, then subscribe now, because what's next goes beyond anything humans ever imagined. In 2024, something new walked onto the battlefield. Not a soldier, not a tank, but a robot. And it was fully armed. They called it Mars, a 165 kilogram machine with machine guns, grenade launchers, and armored wheels. It didn't get tired, it didn't feel fear, and it didn't need orders twice. These machines could patrol streets, defend bases, and even fire in combat without a human in sight. But it didn't stop there. Troops added bounce, imaging 360-degree cameras, letting robots see every corner of a room before anyone walked in. No more guessing if an enemy was hiding behind a door, the robot checked first, 
it was the next level of safety and attack. And while machines moved across land, engineers made sure they could cross water too. France's EFA amphibious rig rolled in, a giant bridge on wheels. It could carry 150 tons across any river in under 10 minutes. Thanks. Trucks. Even mobile bases. Nothing needed to wait anymore. So now, robots were fighting, scouting, and even building bridges faster than ever before. And guess what? They weren't just saving time, they were saving lives. Because for the first time in war, the front line wasn't human. But as amazing as land robots and river rigs were, the next breakthrough would fly even higher and dive even deeper. It would take the battle to the skies and the bottom of the ocean. In 2025, the war zone reached a whole new level, high above the clouds and deep beneath the waves. In the sky, Venus Aerospace tested a new kind of engine, the VDR-2 hypersonic engine. It was built to fly at Mach 6, six times the speed of sound. But they weren't stopping there. They were already building something faster, the Mach 9 Stargazer. That's not just fast, that's faster than most missiles, and it could be used for both war and travel. Now imagine this, a soldier could fly from New York to Tokyo in less than an hour, or a missile could strike before anyone could even hear it coming. But the skies weren't the only battlefield. Below the waves, the sail drone surveyor moved silently. It sailed for 12 months nonstop, mapping the entire ocean floor without a single person on board. That's like having an underwater spy, watching everything in secret. At the same time, Australia's Ghost Bat UAV flew next to F-35 stealth jets for 3,700 kilometers. One jet, one drone, working as a team, sharing the sky, sharing the fight. By now, war wasn't just on the ground or sea. It had become global, from the deepest oceans to the supersonic skies. Machines were everywhere, watching, flying, scanning, and striking. The battlefield was no longer local. It was planet-wide. But here's the real question. With all these powerful inventions, what secret truly connects them all? The big secret behind today's weapons? Science fiction is no longer a dream. It's the new face of real war. In the past, people only saw these things in movies. But in 2025, they are already on the battlefield. Take the Shadow Seal, a tiny submarine controlled with something as simple as a PlayStation controller. Yes, a war machine guided by buttons you'd use in a video game. It can sneak through the sea, carry special forces, or scout enemy waters, all while staying hidden and silent. Now imagine building a military base overnight. With 3D printing, that's no longer science fiction. The Army now builds bunkers and shelters in just 24 hours using giant robotic printers. Strong, fast, and safer than ever before. And it doesn't stop there. New exosuits are being tested, giving soldiers super strength. Night vision is now inside contact lenses. Combat helmets scan brainwaves. Drones learn targets using AI without being told twice. The battlefield has become a place of machines, code, and sensors. And the soldiers? They are no longer just carrying rifles. They are pilots of robots, managers of data, and commanders of systems. Every step, every move, tracked, planned, and enhanced by tech. The line between imagination and reality has been erased. War is no longer just about bravery. It's about who can build, code, and deploy the fastest tech. So what does all this really mean? When wars are fought by flying robots, hypersonic jets, and AI-driven submarines? When bases rise in a day and soldiers wear armor like superheroes? What kind of war will tomorrow bring? The truth is clear now. Modern war isn't about who has the most soldiers. It's about who controls the smartest machines. Drones that fire missiles, jets that fly faster than sound, robots that carry gear, guard troops, and fight side by side. These are the new warriors. And the tools? They don't even look like weapons. Some look like blankets that stop bullets. Others like video game controllers that launch submarines. Even a small net can stop a deadly drone. What once looked like toys or tools 
are now the backbone of survival. This is the new battlefield. And the lesson? The one who controls the tech controls the fight. Back in 2022, it started with just one drone. Now in 2025, the world has hypersonic jets, robot dogs, and AI-led squads. The speed, the power, the thinking machines. They're rewriting what war means. And yes, these inventions truly blow the mind. But here's the question that lingers. Will this new world of tech war bring peace because no one dares to fight? Or will it trigger a future war so fast, so deadly, that humans can't stop it in time? The world of war has changed forever, from small drones flying like soldiers, to net guns that catch killers mid-air, from soft blankets that stop bullets, to jets that race at Mach 9. This is no longer the old battlefield. It's a place where machines fly, think, and protect, and sometimes even replace humans. But these are not just weapons. They are the first signs of humanity's next step. They show us what's coming, not just in war, but in science, in technology, and in how we live and survive. And it's only the beginning. So if you want to keep discovering the hidden tech, the secret machines, and the stories that shock the world, subscribe now for more, because what's coming next might be even stranger than fiction. And now we want to hear from you. Which invention blew your mind the most? Was it the $27 drone killer, the Mach 9 hypersonic jet, or the PlayStation-powered submarine? Tell us below and prepare for what's next, because the future is already here.